On this day in Outlander history, The Reckoning aired. It was the first episode after months of waiting. Here are my thoughts on Outlander Season 1, Episode 9 while re-watching. Outlander Season 1, Episode 9 aired on this day in Outlander history. After waiting six months for a new episode, we finally got to see how Jamie managed to get to the window of Fort William. The Reckoning was written by executive producer, and now showrunner, Matthew B. Roberts. It took a slightly different focus, with Jamie's voiceover instead of Claire's. The first time I watched this, I wondered whether the novel by Diana Gabaldon included sections of Jamie's narration, I'm a show first fan of the entire series. Part of me enjoyed getting Jamie's point of view, seeing more focus on him. However, I'm not a fan of voiceovers in general, so I still felt taken out of the story listening to it all. During my rewatch, the voiceover took me out less, but still a little. To be honest, I've come to just accept it earlier on but I enjoyed Outlander Season 4 more without it. Voiceovers are going to be a personal choice. This was an episode that brought some considerable development between Claire and Jamie. After initially trying to get through the stones, this episode gave us the development of the bond that would later lead to Claire choosing to remain. While re-watching, here are the five thoughts I had. 5. Jamie immediately proved himself a leader of men. At the very start of the episode, we get a flashback of Jamie heading to the window of Fort William. We get to see the plan of attack and the decisions he made to save Claire. One thing that I noticed in the rewatch was how Jamie proved himself a leader of men. While Ned was the one to point out that they couldn't kill, Jamie managed to set up the plan and gave orders along the way. He was the one to make sure Rupert, Angus, Murtaugh, and even Dougal took the right steps to get through Fort William and save Claire. Even after, he continued to give orders. He found a spot to water the horses and gave the order to stop. He was the one to decide when to move forward and took matters into his own hands when necessary. Then when it came to Colum wanting to find out about the raid, when he wants to know if the Mackenzies will have to answer to things, Jamie is the one that takes the full blame. This would foreshadow Jamie's abilities to lead the men later. We got to see his ability to jump between a follower and a leader. When he needs to, he will get behind a plan but he is more than capable of leading, which is important when it comes to the Battle of Culloden. 4. If only Jamie knew the easier world Claire came from. I had to chuckle when Jamie mentioned Claire came from an easier world. He admits that Claire doesn't know the Highlander ways and wouldn't expect what was coming to her. Outlander Season 1, Episode 9 continually showed us that Jamie understood Claire was out of her depth. Throughout the episode, though, I just thought if only he knew. This isn't just about English versus Scottish. This is about Claire coming from a very different time. Jamie is often a man ahead of his time, but not during this episode. And I have no problem with that. He would be learning from others around him. He doesn't know what it takes to make a marriage work well, what it means to be a partnership. This is a learning point for both him and Claire. Claire needs to learn what's expected of her in this time period, whether she likes it or not, and Jamie needs to learn how to treat a woman better. Just because the other men expect something of him doesn't mean he has to go with their way of treating women. One thing everything between them in the episode does offer is development. They create a bond that can't be broken. 3. The men really are like frat boys. If you hadn't realized it before, Outlander Season 1, Episode 9 points out that the men really are just frat boys. They gather together, speaking about their antics, poking fun of each other, and chuckling at Jamie's actions in the bedroom. This is something the Ray Watch pointed out. They put their lives on the line for Claire and Jamie, but they weren't going to forget easily. They expected Jamie to put things right and chuckled as it happened, not solely at what was happening to Claire but that she was giving back just as much as she got. As embarrassing as the next morning was for Claire, the men didn't just laugh at her. They couldn't help but comment at the bruises Jamie had. Plus, the conversations quickly moved on. Later, they would gang together, with clans against each other. In a way, it was like frat houses against each other. This small group of men is just like boys at times, 
adding humor to what could have been a difficult and heavy episode. 2. Larry was genuinely upset over the loss. While I know everything that Larry does after, up to this point, I did feel for Larry. I still do, even after everything. Larry was a woman of her time and that meant everything was stacked against her. However, one thing I noticed during the reckoning is that Larry was genuinely upset about Jamie marrying Claire. She had waited for him. She believed she was in love with him and thought he liked her back, she'd hoped to make him fall in love with her. This was a girl desperate for love and happiness in a world where that was going to be impossible. Just as she thought she might get it, after the way Jamie unfairly led her on, everything continued to work against her. This is where the bitterness starts and, in a way, it's not surprising. Many others would act the same way, especially at 16 when the hormones in the body are going crazy. Jamie continues to even lead her on. During the scene by the river, we see him act like he didn't want to marry Claire and part of him wanted to be with Leary. That was just asking for trouble. I will give Jamie credit, though. When he finds the ill wish, he knows that Larry is involved. 1. Colin makes his position clear. If you ever thought Colin would side with the Mackenzie rebels, you were sorely mistaken. He made it clear during this episode which side he was on when it came to the Jacobite rebellion. At the same time, he proves himself to be the smartest man in the room. Despite his disability, it's clear just why he's the Laird of the Mackenzie men. Dougal is good in times of war, but he doesn't have the forward thinking that Colum does. Colum had already made sure there was someone loyal to him with the rent party. He made sure all about money. And he continually planned ahead to make sure the Mackenzie clan remained on solid ground and avoided anyone becoming traitors. More importantly, Colum also shows other plans he already had in motion. He, inadvertently to Jamie, makes it clear that he never expected Dougal to take over as Laird. Nor did he expect Hamish to be old enough. He was making way for Jamie to be the one to take over. What were your thoughts during the rewatch of Outlander Season 1, Episode 9? What were your favorite moments? Share your thoughts in the comments below.